<coughs> Hello, and welcome everyone. It's hard to believe that I'm already standing here at the beginning of the end, the closing ceremony for VWBPE 2015. Where did the time go? It seems like just yesterday we were gathered at the same spot for the pre-conference crossroads show and our first <coughs> keynote speaker, E.B. Linden. But it's been a great four-day conference, hasn't it? My name is Roxy Nero, Nero, and I'm the chairperson for the social committee. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the closing ceremony. You'll get to meet some of the people who have worked diligently behind the scenes to make this conference the huge success that it is. You'll also get to hear about our post-conference activities and next year's conference, VWBPE 2016. And most importantly, we will be recognizing someone in the field of education who has provided outstanding service to both the VWBPE conference as well as to virtual world communities at large as the recipient of the 2015 Thinkerer Award, the highest achievement given to anyone from VWBPE. But to get us started, it's my pleasure to introduce to you someone who's not only one of Second Life's <coughs> biggest celebrities, but also has become a vital part of our conference, a tradition for us as the MC of our closing ceremonies. Most of us first got to know Pookie Amsterdam as the hostess of one of Second Life's most popular game shows, The First Question, where contestants were asked the big question about science, invention, and achievement. Throughout the metaverse, she has become a legend in her own right. Many of us have anxiously awaited each new episode of The Time Travelers. The final episode has been playing at the VWBPE 15 drive-in as part of our Machinima Showcase. So if you haven't seen it yet, be sure to check it and the other 39 Machinimas out. Pookie Amsterdam is the CEO, producer, and writer for Pookie Media Films. She is a strong advocate for excellence in education, especially the visual arts, as evidenced through her machinima and video in virtual worlds. She's outspoken about her enormous respect and admiration for the work that educators do each day, and our respect and admiration for her work is mutual. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the one, the only, give it up for Miss Pookie Amsterdam. Thank you so much, Rosie, and thank you to the entire virtual world best practice and education organization. Here we are again, and in this fast-paced world of new invention, new platforms, and a Moore's Law aspect to technology, being anywhere again, that resounds with meaning. Virtual education is, I do believe, here to stay. Second Life is vital, renewing and reclaiming its commitment to the educational community while also on the verge of launching many new aspects. The open sims are growing without abatement. Virtual worlds, whether or not you lived with us through the trow of disillusionment or are now just emerging into the sunny slopes of enlightenment as we are today, hey, we are certainly still on the forefront and cutting edge of education. But even if that USB plug uh, in your right ear was ready and we could download the entire event and play it in our mind pods upon demand, of course, would we? For the real nature of the live event and the excitement of being here together is in some ways immeasurable and in all ways memorable. We have chosen this kind of immersion in real time because it works, because we really gain through these unique experiences shared just in this way, together. It took a lot of leadership and foresight for us to get here again. So it is indeed a privilege to introduce the guy who kind of heads this up, Kevin Feenan, in Second Life, Felin Karamo. He is the founder of Rockcliffe University Consortium. 
Kevin has been the executive director of VWBPE since 2009 and looks after both producing and directing the conference in addition to managing all of the VWBPE assets and archives. He's our go-to man. Kevin is also subcommittee chair responsible for sponsors, logistics, finance, and the broadcast teams. Yes, he's our hero. Please welcome Phelan Korama. Great. Thank you, Pookie. First off, I'd like to thank and congratulate all of the subcommittee chairs for this year's conference. The success of this conference goes in part to the very many, many late nights and long hours this year's team has put into making this conference a success. Pookie will be introducing all the members of the committee shortly. I think it goes without saying, however, that without these dedicated individuals and the support of everyone here, that a conference such as this one would just simply not be possible. My deepest appreciation and heartfelt thanks goes to each and every one of them and their many accomplishments over the past 12 months to bring this all together. Every year, VWBBE introduces new program elements into the conference in trying to stay at the forefront of virtual studies and best practices. This year, we are especially proud of the collaboration between multiple organizations such as Avicon Incorporated, whose help in providing a stable open, sim, uh, open simulator environment has been monumental in promotion of our multi-grid conference. Also, a special shout out to all the broadcast team members, including those at the University of New Mexico. This year is the first year that we have had so many volunteers for the broadcast team. There has been a very steep learning curve and everyone has stepped up to the challenge. All right, I can't take my eyes off that man. <laughs> there is an old saying, Hmm? Fix the hath and fix the man. In our lifetime, this could be reframed as build the world and build the people. We learn who we are and what we are really capable of when we are called to create something out of a virtual platform. To create a world or a build or a program out of electric pixels and 3D prims can define who we are, what we want, offering gains in our understanding through the direct application of knowledge. I build, therefore I learn, or I learn, therefore I build. For me, the talk that John Philwalk gave on shared environments was very worthwhile for this. Also, the virtual ability panel, incredibly rich in information and, as always, inspiring. I mean, can you believe the work that they do? The work that virtual ability does is the testimony, in my opinion, to some of the best that we can achieve as human beings together. And this year, the CEO of Linden Labs finally got to open the VWBPE. Ebby Altberg's keynote was a highlight because it means so much for Linden Lab to realize how in the forefront of best use, our educational community has been and forever will be. Well, as long as there is electricity. The educational community has brought this platform into the lives of a multitude of people, changing the way we can learn and even what that means for us and for generations to follow. Letitia de Leon is Letty Lexstone, Letty Lexstone in Second Life. She is an associate professor 
in a teacher preparation program with the University of Texas Pan American, shortly to be changed to the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. She is the VWBPE program's chair and one of the three members of the VWBPE Executive Committee, the Triumvirate. So, without further ado, let us introduce Miss Letty Luckstone. Thank you, Letty. Thank you, Pookie, for that wonderful introduction. Our academic program depends on a significant number of individuals that contribute both behind the scenes and on the scene. First, our presenters who went through a blind peer review process and earned their right to be on our program. Our presenters have done a marvelous job of making our program interesting, varied, and noteworthy. Behind the scenes of that is our reviewers, who put in hours of their time to review these before the conference even began. My heartfelt thanks to them for helping us select some of the best presentations for our conference. The second portion of programs is the mentors we deploy before and during conference so that our presenters can be prepared and ready. My vice chair, Sky Silverweb, who is also my right hand in all things related to program, always does a marvelous job of finding mentors and training them. Because of her and all the mentors that helped us out this year, most of our sessions were accessible to our friends who use text readers or who cannot hear voice. We have made great strides in accessibility this year and we hope to move to 100% next year. Finally, although they were not directly involved in the manner that the program developed or was implemented during the conference, they were invaluable in making our sims run smoothly for all of us. Those silent guardian angels we simply call security have made certain that our presenters had smooth sessions. Not only that, they looked cool doing it. Thank you so much, Letty. Wow. I love that men in black. They look better as avatars, believe it. All right. Becky Adams, a.k.a. Ila Pinion, in Second Life is an instructor and director of faculty support and online course development at the University of New Mexico. She is also the volunteer chair for our VWBPE 15 conference. As the volunteer our committee, Eli supports the conference. As the volunteer committee chair, Eli supports the conference by organizing volunteers for roles needed for the conference to run smoothly. And believe me, without them, they, it might not. This includes recruiting, training, and scheduling. This is an amazing committee of dedicated and hardworking volunteers who give blood, sweat, and tears daily. We couldn't do it without them. Thank you so much, Ellie Pinion. Thank you, Pookie. Thank you. I, along with the entire VWBPE organizational committee, would like to thank the absolutely phenomenal group of people that stepped up this year to be volunteers. As you must know, it takes thousands of hours to put on a conference like this one, but having one without a significant hitch in a virtual world takes an extra amount of planning and many dedicated volunteers. From estate managers and parcel managers who help things res, keep voice working, and quiet nerves, to our expert moderators, quadriven facilitators and assistants who as experienced veterans smooth the way. To those very important mentors led by our wonderful iSky Silverweb who assist our amazing presenters. Our new broadcast crew who really jumped in the deep end this year and then soared. As well as our exhibit managers, web crew and IT and those amazing, dedicated, and essential greeters who welcomed our most valuable participants as they first land and find their way. And we don't want to forget our security team, Green Lantern Corp, who have done an 
extraordinary job. We also so depend on you. I would also like to give a very special thank you to Blue Barker Low Tide and Lady Slipper Constantine, who have been the very best assistance anyone could have. They were willing to help anytime and have been a huge support for our entire volunteer team. So I would like, on behalf of the committee, to thank each and every one of the over 75 volunteers who have given their time and heart to make this a success. We sincerely appreciate each and every one of you and are very aware that we could not have done this without you. We look forward to working with you again next year. And thank you so much, Ellie. That is indeed wonderful. All right. Well, once upon a time, Pookie was a noob. And I will be forever grateful for this woman who took me under her formidable and very fashionable wings to help me find my way here. Next, I would like to introduce my mentor and friend, the inimitable Elisa Butler, also known as Bevan Whitfield in Second Life. This is her first year as marketing chair for BWBPE. She is the person behind all of the messages, blogs, and tweets. All those shout outs and pings about BWBPE. Please welcome Bevan Whitfield, but first follow and retweet her. Thank you, Bevan. Hello, Pookie. And thank you very much for this amazing introduction. Um, I would like to start out by thanking everybody, but especially our amazing webmaster, iSky, who on so many occasions sat up with me into the wee hours working on processing this enormous amount of information we need for a conference of this magnitude. Without her, I really don't know how we would have managed. Thank you so much, iSky. I would also like to thank everyone who participated on the VWBPE social media channels. Blogs, pings, tweets, shares, likes, pictures and videos, such amazing feedback. I also truly enjoyed seeing so many non-Second Lifers commenting and reading about this virtual conference and what a wonderful it truly is. Let's keep up the great work, everyone. And thank you. And Bevan indeed ha is a, a beautiful and amazing and very talented, very talented person. Okay. Did that work? Next. Okay. Oh, anyhow, oh. thanks everybody. <laughs> Go ahead, babe. Very talented and so busy. Uh, I think that you're right in the audience. She did tweet out that entire uh, speech, so make sure you look out for it. Luckily, it, we did have a wonderful transcript, and uh, you you missed hearing her because she is very, very fluent in every language, especially Second Life. Thank you again. Okay. This has been an amazing conference and certainly it's a a time to finally and fully celebrate the education community, uh, which is so much a part of this amazing world. Uh, there are over 300, I believe, universities that are part of Second Life. 
the open sim universities are growing. We brought in World of Warcraft this year to the conference. It has been really outstanding. Please make sure that you take care of some of the uh, exit surveys because all of these are very important in building towards next year. Next, I would like to introduce Rosie O'Brien Wojtek, also known as Roxy Niero in Second Life. She is an elementary school principal in Bristol, Connecticut. She is also the editor of VEJ, the Virtual Education Journal. Roxy is back this year as the chair of the Social Committee. She and the Social Committee are the group that have provided people with time to relax, reflect, unwind, like and enjoy some I just crashed. of the great things. Okay. Some of the great things that Second Life has to offer including beverages when you crash and need to get back, and here you are. Um, she is truly amazing, and this year, with the help of the social committee, we ventured into new spaces and places, uh, such as Avacon, which we couldn't have done without her, and World of Warcraft. She gives as do all of the VWBPE, precious hours and energy to the advancement of all our causes. So please, without further ado, let, join me in welcoming Roxy Nero back. She's back, people, to talk about the work of the Social Committee. Take it away, Roxy. Thank you, Pookie, and what a panic <laughs> to crash. Anyway, I'm glad to be back, and I just want to say that at school, I always ask my students, what did you learn, and did you have fun? So as the chair of the social committee, I hope you learned a lot at the conference and that you got many new ideas about things that you'd like to try and things you'd like to do, but more importantly, I hope you had fun. Did you have fun? Let me see it in chat. Let's hear that applause. Show me, how much fun did you really have? I love it. I love it. It was a great time. The social committee is comprised of many amazingly talented people. If you made it to the drive-in for our Machinima Showcase or to the House of Blues Corner, then you've seen two of our most popular venues. Blue Barker Low Tide did an outstanding job building both of these areas as well as all of the other jobs he did behind the scenes, not just for the social committee, but also, as you heard Ellie say, the volunteers. We named the pub after Blue and we, or I should say I, am hoping that we can find a home for it in Second Life after the conference. So give it up to Blue Barker Low Tide. In addition to the builds that Blue did, I'd also like to recognize Serena Offcourse for her work on building the dance area in Avicon, and Kazo Kelly of Lightning Productions for all of his help at the Rotunda and the setup at the house at Blue's Corner. Serena Offcourse reached out and brought out three, brought our three live singers, Lightning Low Tide, Scarlett LaRue, and Griff Barnison to the house at Blue's Corner. They were awesome. And it wouldn't have been the crossroads this year without our Lightning Productions, Eric Clapton tribute concert concerts. So thank you, Kazo Kelly, and all of the talented group of musicians who performed for us. We had one of the best selections of Machinima this year, just some amazing entries. If you didn't get a chance to see them, we will continue to stream them live on VWBPE Channel 3 and at the drive-in until April 18th. You're not going to want to miss all, any of the seven and a half hours of the quality machinima. I would also like to thank Kayvon Sinovka, Abacus Capolino, Grid Jumper, and Blue Barker Low Tide for hosting both of our machinima showcases in the drive-in and for their work behind the scenes, along with Phelan Caramel, Megan House, and the broadcast team for putting together the live streaming events. We also had a first during this conference. That is, we ventured into the world of Warcraft, some of us more timidly than, than others, that would be me, for a big retro raid. A special thanks to the inevitable betrayal instructors for taking us on that adventure. 
I'd also like to give a huge shout out and thanks to Mandy Mimolis, who is responsible for creating this year's swag bag design and all of the goodies inside. If you didn't get your free, you heard it right, free swag bag, be sure to pick it up before you leave. Mandy was also responsible for the fun game area. Hopefully you had a chance to try some of Second Life's favorite games. I'd also like to recognize several other members of our committee. A special thanks to Beth Ghost Raven for helping us organize and especially for hosting the Caledon Quest Hunt that is still going on after the conference. So I hope that you'll take time to check it out. I also want to thank Neiman, Spiff Whitfield, BJ Gearbox, and Maggie Laramore for all of your work behind the scenes. A special shout out to Maggie Laramore for all of your hard work for hosting a dance party at the Chill Bowl Education Village and for working with Mandy and Serena on our exciting bike race through the exhibits. Also a huge special thank you to Equal Knox Pinion of the Fruit Islands who let us use their beautiful beach facilities at Mango Yacht Club yesterday for our Surf's Up beach party hosted by our favorite DJ, Kaz O'Kelly. And I have to tell you, it was snowing in Connecticut where I live, but it was beautiful at the beach. So thank you. I also want to thank Quill and Quirrell for bringing live theater to our conference with our production last night of Almost Maine. It's amazing what we can do in virtual environments. Earlier today, we had our first cross-country bike race, and the winners were, in first place, winning 1,500 Lindens was BJ Gearbox. In second place, winning 1,000 was Jane S. Crystal. And in third place, winning 500 Lindens was Eugenia Calderon. Congratulations to all three of you. And thanks, Mandy, for setting this race up. Those of us who participated think that it should become an annual event. And I know that you've all been waiting to find out who won the scavenger hunt prizes. I hope all of you had fun participating in this activity. A huge shout out to Serena Offcourse and Maggie Laramore for setting up the scavenger hunt in some of the virtual world's most exciting educational sims. So drum roll, please. In third place, winning 500 Lindens is Armanda Thistle. In second place, winning 1,000 Lindens is Krijan Resident. And in first place, winning 1,500 Lindens is Andy Mann Resident. So congratulations to all three of you. And our Metaverse Hopping Grand Prize Scavenger Hunt winner, who ventured through the educational sims, not only in Second Life, but other open sims, even learning how to hypergrid to win his prize of 2,500 Lindens is, let's hear an even bigger drum roll, please. Miss Howard, 118 resident. So thanks to all of you who participated in our scavenger hunt this year. We plan to have an even bigger and better scavenger hunt next year, so we hope you'll plan to join us for even more fun and prizes. And even though we're standing here in front of you at the closing ceremonies, the fun is not over yet. Over yet. After we finish here, put on your black tie, your best denim, and your favorite hat and head over to the rotunda for the final Eric Clapton, Till We Meet Again, tribute concert, followed by our favorite DJ, Kazo Kelly, who will help us dance the night away. So please be sure to join us at the Rotunda following the ceremony. Once again, on behalf of the social committee, we hope that you learned a lot while you were here at the crossroads, but even more, we hope you had fun. Lots and lots and lots of fun. We've already begun planning even more fun next year at VWBPE16, so save the dates and we'll see you next year. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. There she is, the Roxy Nero. That's amazing. This incredible guy gives what he knows to all of us. And without him, it and RIT would have been much more difficult indeed. Dirk McKeenan is the chair of the IT subcommittee. I want to call it the IT subcommittee. He's our IT guy. He's responsible for the development of the conference management software along with, and he couldn't have retained his sanity without the amazing iSky Silverweb, who is indeed a grid-wide treasure herself. 
Dirk has been involved with Rockcliffe since 2009, since the beginning, and with VWBPE for the last three years. Let's bring him on stage now. Oh, here he is, Dirk McKinnon. Thank you very much, Fuki. Um, in 2014, the Virtual World's Best Practices in Education organization um, Wow, I'm getting bad at clicking buttons now. The Virtual World's Best Practices in Education Organization Committee instituted a new personal achievement award and, wow, <laughs> to recognize an individual who has provided outstanding service to both the field of education and the virtual world community at large. The Thinkerer Award is presented to an individual whose deeds and actions have shown a consistent, selfless service towards the promoting of learning, community, educational practices, and who exemplifies the spirit of cooperative development within immersive environments. Recipients of this award are not simply outstanding professionals in their field. Award recipients must characterize transformational leadership qualities to envision and guide change, enhance the motivation, morale, and performance of both peers and, and pupils, promote best practices and continuous improvements, and to inspire others through their words and actions. One such individual is Alice Kruger, better known to many of us as Gentle Huron. Ms. Kruger is founder and president of Virtual Ability Incorporated, a real-world nonprofit organization based in Colorado, USA, with a well-established presence in Second Life. She holds a Master of Science degree and is a mother of three. After a career spanning nearly 40 years in education, teaching both regular and special education, then program management, professional development and research, Ms. Kruger became fully disabled with multiple sclerosis. But this doesn't stop her. To combat the isolation which commonly besets people with significant disabilities, she founded a 501c3 with a mission to bring people with disabilities into online virtual worlds by providing supporting environment in which to thrive there. General Huron first rezzed into Second Life when the Huron Sanctuary was established in 2007. Virtual Ability Incorporated officially adopted a new name in 2008 after having helped numerous people get up and running in Second Life. The original group has grown in size from about 150 individuals to nearly 1,000 members. With an ever strong reputation with Second Life as uh, the leading cr uh, cross-disability community of support for people with real-world disabilities, in 2009, VAI won the first Linden Prize for providing a series of courses and resources to help people with real-world disabilities and get acclimated and start using Second Life. And for its groundbreaking new resident orientation course on Virtual Ability Island. Since that time, Virtual Ability has collaborated with researchers in disability studies. Um, VAI has worked on such diverse projects as the virtual program for military amputees with the US, Med U.S. Army Medical Research and Material Command, participation in Employ Able, a Kessler Foundation grant uh, project of the University of Hawaii Center on Disability Studies, and Virtual Health Adventures, led by Nova Southeastern University, College of Healthcare Sciences. As a mother, activist, educator, researcher, and leader, General's contributions as president of Virtual Ability have resulted in the escalation of discussions for and about people with disabilities in virtual world settings to a level which did not exist before 2007. Her virtual world efforts are a reflection of her tireless work in all worlds, real world speaking engagements on disability related topics, featured speaker of, at the Second Life Community Convention in 2009, authored and co-authored articles on assistive technologies and virtual worlds, featured in Login to Life project, described as on the very edge of civilization, documenting a lifestyle so entirely new 
the few have managed to look beneath the surface of this emerging phenomena. Ms. Kruger has raised the bar for bringing equality in education for persons with disabilities into both the political and corporate boardrooms. Her efforts have led to significant changes at local, national, and international areas, levels. It is for all these reasons, and more, that the VWBPE Organizational Committee proudly confirms Alice Kruger as VWBPE 2015 Thinkerer Award recipient. Alice, gentle, can you come and say a few words, please? Gentle is muted on Skype, and so uh, she is saying... You and I need to start there over again. There you go. Darn it. Do I need to start over again for Skype? I had clicked it, and it apparently clicked it twice. Do I Please need to do. start over, Pookie? Please do. Oh, great. <laughs> Sorry, audience. Your line. voice is so wonderful, and we want to all hear what you have to say. Absolutely. Okay. We'll say it again. The live audience gets it twice. Thank you, and I want to humbly thank the VWBPE Selection Committee and the entire VWBPE community for honoring me with this wonderful award. It means a great deal to me to receive this honor from the education community because this is a community I entered when I began teaching at the age of 20, and I feared I had had to leave it when I couldn't work any longer due to MS. It used to tickle me that sometimes Second Life newcomers, those with whom I was working, would say to me, you used to be a teacher, didn't you? Because that kind of made me feel as if I was still able at least to contribute to somebody's education. And I admit that even the name of this award humbles me. Thinkerer was one of the first people I ever met in Second Life. He modeled good education practices. He listened carefully to the things that I told him that I was interested in. And then he referred me to useful resources and a bunch of interesting people who became dear friends and with whom I'm still in contact seven years afterwards. Thinkerer is a very hard act to follow. I've been gratified to hear throughout the VWBPE conference all the references to the virtual ability community that the various presenters have been making. I'm really pleased that our community has been making a difference in our intersections with the education community in Second Life. I hope that the virtual ability leadership team, all of our wonderful volunteers and community members, 
feel that they are part of this award too. I believe that this is truly a joint award to all of us. Nobody would know Gentle Heron if it were not for the success of the virtual ability community. It moves me greatly that the community of excellent virtual world educators receives me among their ranks. Thank you all. Thank you, and another huge round of applause for our own Gentle Heron. Wow, that's all I can say is a oh, wow. This is, she is quite a visionary and quite an amazing woman. Uh, we are so lucky, so lucky to have her as a part of our, as a part of our lives and a part of our world. And <laughs> I'm, I, I know the world's a better place because <laughs> Gentle Heron is in it. I I thank you for giving me and so many people so much. Okay, well, what, what do you know now? Once again, and it is indeed my pleasure to introduce the VWBPE Executive King, uh, I meant Director. Phelan Coromel, who is going to tell us about the post-conference activities and the exciting highlights for next year's conference, VWBPE 16. Please welcome our own Phelan Coromel. Thank you. Thank you, Pookie. While all good things must come to a close, this ain't one of them. The Virtual World's Best Practice and Education Conference continues with several virtual explorations and tours over the next three weeks. These are wonderful opportunities to visit regions in Second Life, Open Simulator, and other virtual environments, which require more time than a simple one or two hour conference session really allows for. I encourage everyone to check our VWBPE schedule as to the dates and times of each event. These creative uses of the virtual worlds are definitely worth coming out to. Every year, the organizational committee finds hundreds of little things that we can do to help improve the conference for the following year. However, our opinions only represent a small sampling of the up to 3,500 people that attend or are involved with this conference each year. And this is where you come in. We need your insight as to what you thought was done well at the conference and what you think we can do better. We ask that people please fill out the VWBPE15 post-conference feedback survey located on our website. As a perk, the organization committee will give each survey respondent a commemorative collectible displayed uh, up at the top of the stage um, at the back there. You should be able to see one there, and there's a few others that are out uh, for you to take a look at. Also, the Journal of Virtual Studies will be publishing the conference proceedings at the end of next month. This will be the fifth year that we have made conference proceedings available as a downloadable free PDF, which includes links to all the archives and the video for, for reference and for use in additional educational material as part of developing classroom and other materials uh, into the future. Finally, I want to welcome everyone back here in March 2016 for the ninth annual Virtual Worlds Best Practices in Education Conference. I would ask that you please mark the dates as we will be kicking things off March 9th through 12th, 2016. VWB, VWBPE 2016 Horizons is going to break new ground. We have dozens of new opportunities and new ideas to open up with. There are new grids, 
there's more interactivity, there's better networking opportunities, and of course, more best practices. Our horizons are endless, and we hope that you will see beyond the crossroads and join us again next year as we kick off what is sure to be our next great adventure. Whoa, what a man, what a director. Thank you. Thank you. Gee, just thank you all for being a part of this and for making this happen. <laughs> because we all do. From all over the world and in real time and together, it is truly an exceptional few days that we can share. And I hope you've all had a wonderful conference. Be sure to watch the archived live stream videos of this year's events and share them with your colleagues and friends because it lets them know what is possible. It lets them know what we're doing. And it's a very large tent we're under here. So bring them in and get them up to date. Another very heartfelt and big thank you to all who had part in once again making this so successful. Our final Till We Meet Again tribute concert begins in just a few minutes at the Rotunda. We hope you will all plan to head over and, I don't know, dance the night away. You know you can. You dance better here than anywhere else. So until next year, keep doing everything you do to make a difference and, and know that you are making a difference, a huge one. Your passion, enthusiasm, knowledge, and skills about working, networking, and, and what we're doing growing together, we will never be old and we will always be growing as long as we are in this together, and as an inspiration for all of us. So keep up the great work. See you next year as we venture into New Horizons at VWBPE 16. This is Pookie Amsterdam signing off.